So the question that a lot of us have is what exactly happened in the last 15 years that exacerbated the situation to this level? Did the Chinese administration start issuing further restrictions? And if they did, then what was the, you know, what was the reason for this? Like the, the Chinese government, again, so I'm an outsider, obviously, to the entire region. What I saw from them was bureaucratic efficiency, heartless bureaucratic efficiency. Mm -hmm. From their perspective, the way I see it, they don't want to annihilate the Uyghurs. They need that province to have human beings in them. And so, as you yourself are saying, the softening and the hardening of policies, they clearly want people to be able to, you know, be farmers and, and work the land and there are minerals there. They need that. They clearly don't want to annihilate it. Like you said, it's one notch below the concentration camps of Germany because the goal of Germany was to kill everybody. But the goal of, of these concentration camps is to produce factory workers for the bureaucratic administration. So what exactly prompted the government to go down this route that they know there's going to be a backlash? I don't think they're that naive to not understand that. So that's the question I have for you. So the Uyghurs, ever since its occupation, and we see it as an occupation, um, we have been an underlying problem for the Chinese regime for since 1949. They have been looking at ways to annihilate us. When it comes to manpower, we'll get to the manpower. But the global war on terror in 2001 mm. was the perfect excuse mm -hmm. when George Bush said, you know, you're either with us us or them, uh, China said, you know what, we have Muslims within our borders. So they used that, they used, uh, that as a co cover to also um, uh, punish the Uyghurs. So since 2001, they have ramped up what we call sinicizing or assimilating. So first they mm -hmm. did it softly. They would go to, say, the, the families softly and go, you know what? We think your child would do better if they went into the inner lands. So first they did surveys. They took it slowly and slowly. They would offer people money to, to intermarry with Chinese people. And slowly, slowly, they harden their policies. So one, they actually do not need Uyghur people at all because the Chinese people migrate to East Turkestan every year in their hundreds of thousands. And they are given the jobs, they are given the homes, they're given the education. The difference between... The Germans and the Chinese, the Chinese are actually smarter because they have the because they have the money and the technology and the capability to profit off the backs of Muslims. Mm -hmm. So just like uh, the people that live in the wild, you know, us, when, when we want to eat a cow, we only want the best pieces of steak. We want the ribeye. We want that. And we throw away the rest. But people in the wild, they'll, they'll use every part of the animal. So what I meant to say is the Uyghurs from their hair. Their hair right now is a hundred, um, uh, I forget the statistics now, but it's a multi-billion dollar in industry mm. right now because the women's hair, I mean, you know, like uh, obviously, you know, as Muslims, women are not allowed to show their hair, but culturally wise, symbolically, the Uyghur's uh, hair means certain things like various knots, the, the women's hair I'm talking about. Uh, it, it, it indicates whether they're single or not and has various different meanings, what province they're from and whatnot. So in the camps, the, the Chinese are profiting from their hair. Number two, they're profiting from their labor. Uh, we know from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute that 83 global brands, including Apple, Samsung, H&M, uh, and all these big brands that we know um, are directly or indirectly involved. And this has been proven. So they profit off the labor. They profit of what we call halal organ harvesting. Now, obviously, Sheikh, um, you, you, you know your fifth, there's no such thing as halal organs. But uh, this is what this this is this term has been coined because many people in the in the Gulf area opt, and there are many many um, commercials and hospital ads uh, on YouTube you can find, and I'll send you those links uh, where you will actually see Muslim canteens and mess massages in where where hospitals are being destroyed. You've got these hospitals Sorry, to you cater cut, for. You cut out there the for a second. You're saying that you you find Muslim massages on hospitals. In hospitals yeah. in the inner parts of China, specifically to cater for those rich Arab, uh, uh, the, the people in the Gulf that go and get their halal organs. Because apparently, mm -hmm. what they're asking for is they want organs from Muslims. They don't want organs from people that have you know consumed alcohol and pork. And they have a database. 
speaking to a few concentration camp detainees, what they've told me is the first thing that the Chinese, do, uh, the, the authorities do is before they even go to the camps, they check their eyes. They, they take their blood on a daily, uh, on a daily basis. Um, th they are given injections. So they are put into this database and they have all of these records of these people. And these people are ready to go. You know, 30 day money back guarantee. If this, that organ doesn't work. So there is this going on and you can simply type in halal organ harvesting. You can mm. see the many interviews. You, you can see the, the testimony that former Uyghur surgeons who literally, uh, we have one surgeon by the name of Anwar Tohti who currently resides in London. Uh, he basically said um, they, they half, they went to execute uh, a Uyghur prisoner and they purposely shot him in the shoulder and while he was alive he was forced to extract uh, the man's organs while he was still breathing and and now the Chinese in general and and and, and the Muslims of the area the and even according to Chinese statistics the number of people volunteering to to give their organs is very 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 low however in East Turkestan the least populous region in China, even though it's the largest, you have express transfer lanes and all the images you can see on, um, uh, on the internet, express transfer lanes in airports where it says for organs to go through quickly. Now, this must mean God knows how many organs uh, are being harvested for you to have express transfer lanes put into airports. Oh, my God.